Hello and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to take a look at a team not around Shadow Point Toad in general, but the spammiest team in Pokemon Go PvP. It's going to be a team around the Galate, the Politoad, as well as the Greninja. I actually showcased this team before already on my channel, but honestly, I had a lot of fun playing it the last time. And what can I say? I still have a lot of fun playing this team, and it was actually so much better than expected, in honesty. I feel like Politoed has potential to be actually a Pokemon that you can use in the normal meta as well if you don't really want to yeah, have some fun. Actually, every Pokemon here is something that you can run in the normal meta. Greninja is going to be, of course, a very cool core breaker for a lot of teams, but also Galate, of course, is one of the spammiest and also hardest hitting Pokemon. But Honestly, Ice Beam was quite a nice move to have. As you can see, you already had that good run. We actually had to hit it with another charge move anyway, like them catching the move didn't really matter at all in this scenario. but. Yeah, honestly, this team is for sure not perfect. We're going to have a weakness of fairy types with Elite as well as my Pokemon in the back, but it was actually a team that helped me climb actually quite a bit, which is ridiculous. So, first battle we're gonna win, second battle we're going to start off with a great lead, no Pokemon here on this team, it's going to be weak against Carving, we're all going to be able to beat this Pokemon with every single one on our team, but are we going to be able to get a shield here early on against that Hakomo? Oh, is we going to try to go for that Ice Beam against them as well? We can take a hit, take a Dragon Claw, and in comes another one, which you're going to be forced to use a shield against. But at least we're going to have now access to Ice Beam, which is going to do quite a lot of damage. Hopefully going to take the knockout here against the opponent. Let's see how this is going to work out. It does, and so we can align ourselves correctly. In comes actually the Trevenant and they cannot fully farm me down and so Ice Beam on Politoed is taking a lot of damage onto them again here which allows us to go into the Greninja allowing us to go for some Hydro Cannon damage against them as well which is going to do super effective hard hitting damage and the opponent at this point should already realize yeah maybe this game is over. Next opponent coming through, we're going to tank counter Lickitung in the lead. Not ideal for us, but we can get a guaranteed shield advantage in the beginning, going up to the close combat and then going for the Leaf Play to keep some energy. It's going to allow us to get a little bit of an advantage here, try to catch the move, but it did not work out, so we have to kind of deal with the Power Whip now on to our Politoed. But they actually decided to go for the bait here, which makes it a little bit more awkward, especially as they decided to go into their Polyrath, which they have here in the back. And so this is going to be a little bit of a trickier one. Polyrath running usually is called into Icy Wind, would have access to Dynamic Punch, but basically nobody is running this move. Um, it's going to be kind of counter for us because we're not running Earthquake on the Polytoad. Earthquake is recommended on Polytoad, but Ice Beam is Legacy, Earthquake is Legacy, I didn't want to really use another TM for that. They go for the Icy Wind, which is fine. We can go to a Greninja, we should be able to take any kind of hit from the opponent, again, unless it's going to be something like Power Punch or Dynamic Punch. What the hell? Yeah, that's game over now. Next opponent, we're going to have the Annihilate in the lead. That's going to be quite a lovely lead that I would like to see for this team. It is just, just slightly not ideal. Why is it slightly not ideal? We're going to see it here right now. The opponent is just barely not in range for the farm down, or we just lag again and give the opponent a free fast move, which we should have not done there, but that's the game we play right now. But um, we're barely just missing out at the knockout here, so we're forced to go for another Leaf Blade. The opponent decides to use no shield. And let's see what's coming in next. It's going to be the Gligar, where we're going to have two good answers against. Here's the thing. Um, most people would imagine that Politoed is running Earthquake, which is the like, recommended moveset, which we don't have here. So even for Lantern, we are going to be able to get a shield here already, which is going to be lovely. They go for the Thunderbolt. Happy days for me. I could just go for the Leaf Blade spam here with my Glade, trying to overfarm by quite a bit here and just try to win the battle late, late game then as well with our Greninja. We have to still hit another Leaf Blade here in order to have a chance of winning this battle, so forcing us to use a shield against its surf. But the Leaf Blade is going to do around like 80% of the opponent's health. Doesn't get the knockout straight away, but you can swap onto the Greninja as they decide to swap out now into their own Gliger. We can even get a free fast move in, which is going to be mattering quite a bit here as the aerial ace is going to get us low but not get the knockout. But what you're going to see now as well is that the Hydro Cannon actually is not going to be enough yet to knock them out. We need one more fast move and so this is going to be a very good game now as the Hydro Cannon is going to knock out that opponent's land in here as well and we can move on to the next one. Let's take a look at the next opponent. We're going to encounter the Relegator in the lead. What you want to do here is kind of want to go for one Leaf Bed, get the guaranteed shield advantage, and then swap out into your water types because they can take the hits a little bit better. 
So, shield advantage is going to be secured now, which can be quite a beneficial for us later on as I swap onto a Gudra, saying, saying goodbye to that Gudra here as well, with that Ice Beam coming through, getting a ton of damage onto them, and we can even reach that Weather Ball in time before they can do anything. The pacing is, by the way, the exact same as you know it already from the Quagsire. Weather Ball takes the same amount of um, energy as Awkward Tail, and Stone Edge is the same as an Ice Beam, so like you kind of can be familiar with how much energy this Pokemon needs, based on what you know from Politoed. Oh, uh, from Politoed, from, of course, the cracks there. Anyway, we're going to see here the uh, Furley Gather coming back in. It's not an ideal matchup for us, of course, because we have to take a hit now. It does quite a lot of damage. And in the back, it's just going to be lurking the Gligar. We're gonna be in a little bit of a tough spot here. As they were able to catch the move, I'm forced to go for another Night Slash here, hoping that they would use a shield against it. Let's see if this is going to work. They decide to use a shield, and that's going to be huge, because now I can reach another Hydro Cannon, knocking them out, forcing them out as well. And we should be able to swap out now into our Glade, hoping that we can still reach the Leaf Bit in time. We can, and that is going to be a very good game good game to the opponent let's move on to the next one well, let's see what they're going to have. They're going to have another Annihilate in the lead, which is going to be lovely because now we can avoid this one with our Greninja in the back. We can go straight for the Leaf Blade, not even really trolling around and going for extra fast moves. Straight Leaf Blade, I'm going to get them insanely low. I could decide to swap out here this one as well into my Politoed, but I decide to rather stay in here. They always go for the Night Search. There's nobody ever going for the Shadow Ball, but still, I feel like it is better to just keep the shield there, keep this Pokemon a little bit healthier. They're going to use a shield here on our move. We can no shield actually their move and try to get out of here with a move stored, but they swap out into the Licky Tank, making this quite a difficult game to come back from. We can go for the Hydro Cannon spam, but at the end of the day, they're very like just gonna try to go for that um, power whip anyway here, which they would be able to get to at this point, most likely. We use a shield, it's just going to be the body slam, but at least we can go for another Hydro Cannon back to back afterwards here, which is going to be able to get some nice damage onto them. We can just barely not fall, fully farm them down, but at this point we hopefully going to still be fine, but I make a huge mistake. I should swap out of here. I should swap out of this matchup, but I thought I might be able to just store up one more move against the Annihilate, and I just overestimated the bulk of my Greninja. And so, at this point, it's all down to Politoed. The one still has a shield left. Sadly, we are not running Earthquake. Earthquake would be double super effective here. So we have to go for the Weather Ball spam, which is fine. It is what it is, but it is not ideal. And so basically, if I still had my Green Ninja left at this point, I would have been in a great spot because I would have still got to another move against this Pokemon here. But as you can see, the opponent is just barely going to be able to go for the full farm down as a Mud Shot plus a Weather Ball is not enough to take down a Bastion, which is quite ridiculous. But we can move on to the next opponent. We're going to have an Napoleon in the lead. We're going to have two Pokemon in the back that can resist the fast move at least, which is going to be okay. We can try to swap out after this Leaf Blade coming through as well. Trying to catch a move here, we can catch a move, but it's very likely going to be a Drill Pack, which is going to be neutral against us, which is the case here. They're going to swap out again into the Gudra. I guess they just don't learn, as we can go for an Ice Beam here after we used one Shield. I just have to hope actually that the opponent decides to let the move go through. This would be so much better for me because if we, they decide to do this, which they do, we might be able to fully farm them down, which we can, and so we can align ourselves. And so that is going to be quite huge. As we can go for another Weather Ball, the opponent is going to be forced to take this hit and we can go into our Greninja, take the fast move, take a charge move here with a shield, but we're gonna be able to over farm by quite a bit and hopefully we can win against whatever they have in the bag. It is going to be the worst possible Pokemon I could encounter. It is going to be that Wiggly Tough. Honestly, great play by the opponent to let the move go through. Bad play by me to go for the bait here because it doesn't really matter. But we kind of have to hope that still we can maybe win with Gallade, but I doubt at this point we kind of really have to outspeed that opponent's Empoleon. We don't have a lot of health left. Can we still outspeed them? Yeah, it's going to be super close, but yes, we can outspeed them. And this is going to allow us to knock them out with then Leaf Blade here. Next opponent, we're going to encounter Sableye in the lead, which is definitely not ideal. So we're going to have to swap out straight away into our Politoed. Going for the Weather Ball, going for some spam here against the opponent. We still have our Greninja as one of the hardest answers to this Pokemon as I swap out into the Skarmory. A uh, matchup that is kind of confusing to me because I don't know why they would want to go into a Skarmory against um, a water type Pokemon. Usually not the ideal place for a Skarmory to live in, but that's definitely going to be 
okay by me. We can see we can still even reach another weather ball in time before they even go for the first charge move, which is ridiculous as we can go ahead and get some nice damage onto them. We can use a shield and guarantee alignment with this, which is going to be quite important for later on because I cannot have that Sableye against our Galate. They swap onto the Sableye again, allowing us to take the move and also swap out into our Greninja, which can take more hits from them. They swap onto the Deoxys. I make a little bit of a silly mistake by going for the Night Flash here. I should have stored that one up for later on. As we're gonna get the shield here, it's kind of fine, but like the likelihood of us getting like a boost would have been kind of cool, like 12.5% chance there to have a way better matchup later on. So most likely it would have been better to just keep the energy for a little while. Anyway, they decided to go for a Thunderbolt, which is just barely not enough, allowing us to go for another Leaf Blade, trying to get the shield from the opponent here. Let's see if we're gonna get the final one. We get the final shield from them. Now it's down to our Greninja, trying to reach another Night Slash, which is not going to work out straight away, but at least we should have the energy at this point, which we are going to use soon as they swap out into the Sableye first. We are forced to go for one Night Search here, knocking them out. We're not going to get any boost, but we can still go for another Night Search afterwards. It's going to do super effective damage, stab damage as well, and gonna take the knockout as we get our boost. Three more battles to go, we're going to have a horror beat for us, we can swap out again into our Politoed, out spamming them or like it's nothing, or whether ball is going to be able to get the shield here already, and I kind of would like to go up to the Ice Beam now as well, especially as we need like one less fast move as usual, thanks to the extra energy that we gained from the weather ball. Anyway, they swap out into their own Feraligator, which is not ideal for me, I would rather have the Greninja against this Pokemon here at this point. But it's going to be fine, we have to deal with it anyway as the opponent goes for the Hydro Cannon. I want to kind of swap out afterwards, let's see if we're going to do that actually. It's a little bit of a silly play to swap out here, but I kind of want to do it. And so the opponent also deal with the Greninja and we can go for the Night Slash to try to knock out that, uh, like that Freligator. I want to say Emporium, but that's a different one type of starter. But yeah, Freligator goes down and that's kind of great. Let's see what's going to be in the back. It is going to be uh, that Gliga again. So they are going to be weak to uh, the Greninja, which is an interesting information here. So. There might be a Pokemon in the back that is going to be very weak even against us, and it's going to be a Bastion, which is gonna be quite lovely. We can go for Hydro Cannon, get a ton of damage onto them. We even try to go for another one here as well, just to try to even turn down the switch clock a little bit. And if we're gonna be able to get them low here as well, we should be able to go into our Glade, try to go for the full farm down. They go for a charge move. It is going to be that Stone Edge being resisted, barely doing any damage. Now it's down to whatever they have in the back. It's going to be that Glade here, uh, the Glade of our side. You can see Shadow Glade of the opponent. And we're gonna be able to get the shield here on the CMP tie. And you know already, we have a Hydro Cannon start, and so that game is over. Hydro Cannon coming through, Greninja going to be able to finish up this battle, and we can move on to the second to last battle for today. Next opponent, horrible lead here. It's going to be a Wicked Tough. How can we come back from such a bad lead of a Wicked Tough? Let's find out if we can do that. It's going to be quite a task, but. I still believe in this team here, being the spammiest of them all, having a charge move every 4 seconds is quite ridiculous. But um, yeah, let's take a look at this one, we're gonna see already, Weather Ball did quite some decent damage as they're very likely gonna go for the Ice Wind now. That is fine, they swap out into the Steelix, allowing me to go for some super effective hits here with the Weather Ball, going to land against the opponent here, getting some nice delicious damage in. What we can do next is go for another one, of course, as they're very likely gonna go for the Psychic Fang soon, as they don't want to get hit by another move. I am forced to kinda let the move go through, as we are gonna go ahead and go to the Greninja, trying to go for the full farm on against the opponent. Only getting two fast moves in is the only way of really managing this matchup here. Let's see what they're gonna go into next. It's going to be that a weekly tough. We have to try and hope that double Night Sash is going to be enough to knock them out, or at least get them to a range where we can fully farm them down with the other Pokemon that we have. And as you're gonna see now, we got a shield from the opponent. The opponent's shield is we still have a shield left. My only play is to go up to one leaf bit in a one close comment here, which we are going to be able to do. And so that game is over as well. That opponent's uh, last Pokemon, that Wicked Tough, is not going to enjoy the uh, leaf bit here at all. And this is going to be a good game. Final battle for the day, we're going to start off with a horrible lead matchup. I am forced to swap out here as well as they're running Confusion Cressalia, Lantern in the back, 
Of course, Lantry is always going to be a little bit scared of the potential of having an Earthquake, which is the usual moveset on this Pokemon. Getting the shield early here is going to be quite crucial, especially if the opponent goes for another shield here. This would be quite lucky, is it? Yes, we are quite lucky. As the opponent decides to use another shield here, we're just going to have Weather Ball, so we're just going to spam that anyway. This is our best move. They can go for the full farm down, though, which is a little bit annoying, but it is what it is. We can still deal with this Pokemon later on. Let's go for the Weather Ball, get them a little bit low, get into our Glade and try to ramp up some energy to go for the Leaf Blade to knock out the opponent's um, Lantern here. We are forced to use a shield, always like to be like two shields up, but it is what it is. The opponent is going to decide as well to swap onto the Crystallia, allowing us to go ahead and go up into our Greninja. Is this going to be a sweep of Greninja? Let's find out here together. The Grass Nut is coming through, Night Surge is coming through as well. Do we get a boost here? A boost would actually change quite a bit for those matchups. We do get the boost here and this is going to be the only matchup so far where the boost might actually come in clutch and meta for us. So let's see here, we're going to be able to get the first knockout. Then comes the Lantern, can we get another knockout against the opponent? Yes, we can. And now it's down to the final Pokemon. Being a Clotzai allows us to sweep the entire opponent's team just with our Greninja. And hopefully you enjoyed the showcase of the fastest team in Pokemon Go. And I see you then. Bye-bye.